Let's talk about the dry fly. Let's talk about the Yellowstone area of dry flies. And number one that comes to my mind, especially on the Henry's Fork, but the Yellowstone River itself in Yellowstone Park is the Western Green Drake. This is our largest mayfly in the West, Western states here. And it emerges pretty much about 20, June 20th on the Henry's Fork, but it also again merges in late July and early August on the Yellowstone. And there's a couple different variations of this fly, but basically it's a Western Green Drake. They used to call it the, the grandest, the great big dry fly. So we're gonna do a couple of things here. For a tail on this, I want a stubby tail, so we're gonna use some deer hair dyed olive. And I dye it yellow and it comes out olive. I don't dye it olive. This is brown or a gray deer hair, white tail. I dye it yellow and it comes out a beautiful olive. And I use it on my yellow muddler minnows for a collar, and I use it on the tail for my green drakes. And like I said uh, before, I think Mike Lawson came up with the first pattern on this green drake using this nice dyed yellow grizzly. I tied the fly before he did and uh, sold them, but I tied my, my hackle with gray hackle, done, which I was used to coming from back east. And so I switched, I like Mike's idea better, so I changed my pattern and I use now that hackle he liked, which is the dyed yellow grizzly, or even dyed insect green. Anyway, this is a bright fly when it first comes out, so it's kind of fun. I changed the pattern a little bit, so it's not quite a wolf. The original one I tied was called a green, Western Green Drake Wolf, and I could do that for you. But I changed it. I, I tie what they call now a Comparadon, only like a super Comparadon, and I take a dye gray or natural gray um, deer hair, or I could take dyed gray, this is dyed elk, in a dun color. This is a very smoky dun wing. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little elk here and see if that'll work for me for this fly. And I do a Comparadon style. I have to give Kuzi and Nastasi some good credit on that when they come up with that Comparadon idea because it does work really well and I use it on this fly. That's going to make a nice size wing for this fly so I'm going to tie it in tight. About three wraps to get it right where I want it, right where the wing should be, and then carefully cut everything off in the back. Got it. This is a Comparadon style. It lays flat on the water. I also tied this fly over the years upside down where the hook would run up. So I did a lot of funny things with this, but having fun. I'll go around that wing a couple of times, about three times, pull it tight. That way I got it locked in there. And then I'll push it with my thumbnail and we've got my nice wing just about ready to start on the big dry fly. The hook is a 285 Dairiki hook, but any hook about a 1X long nymph hook would work on this fly. You want a little stouter, like a wolf fly, you want a little stouter wing and a stouter hook on this because you're after big fish. Okay, we got that. We're going to put a little cement on that base, base of the wing. Now we're going to make it look like a green drake. Any kind of yellow thread, whatever you have yellow will work for a ribbing. But this is special. This is some Gouda Broad stuff that I got a few years ago and I was working with their company. It's a size double E or E, double E, I think. I said three over, but that's not what it is, double E. And it's a silk thread. So it's a buttonhole twist thread, but it's silk. And I love using silk when I can. So there's some nice silk, yellow silk for a ribbing. Put that on there. We're going to put just a little more cement again. And then we're going to put a little bit of wax on our thread, and we're going to dub a body. And this dub, the color I use is a plain bluing olive, or actually a light olive. I just call it a Western Green Drake dubbing. And I make this myself. So we're going to put a little dubbing on here. Australian opossum, pretty much straight opossum dyed olive. And I have several shades of olives that I just a little darker, a little lighter. But I call this, I don't like quite to call it a bluing olive, though that's what I wrote there. It's really a western green drake olive. A little brighter. This is a bright fly when it first comes out. All right, we're going to dub that. I'm going to put a little wax on my fingertips, and that lets the dubbing really tight, tighten down, allows me to, to put a nice spin on that dubbing. I don't want it too loose. That looks good. I think I got enough there, hopefully. We're going to make a wrap always behind your ribbing before you go forward. Make it back. That way you can't see to where the ribbing started. And then bring it up thin. You don't want too heavy. Even though this is a chunky fly, you don't want to make it too bulky. And then a couple wraps in front where my head's going to be. Got it. This is the green drake, the big dry fly. That looks pretty good so far. When we'll clean up a few things around here if you want some of that dubbing. Now we're going to make a nice, bright ribbing. This bright yellow silk. 
buttonhole twist. You can pretty much go to the, any one of your uh, thread stores, you know, and place where you buy thread or get your materials and you can get some bright yellow, but that looks good. All right, now we're gonna do a hackle. Now a regular thorax fly, you don't even need any hackle. That would work like that. But on a size 14, even 12, bigger, I put a hackle. So we're gonna go ahead and use Mike Lawson's idea from years ago, which we've all used now, it's a good one. We're gonna go ahead using two hackles, and we're just gonna basically wrap the hackle thorax style around the base of that throat where that wing sticks out. And one hackle probably would do it, but I'm gonna put two on. Two hackles underneath there, right against that wing. A couple of wraps to hold that, and then a couple of wraps front. We got her. Now we're going to put wrap very close to the wing, both front and aft, fore and aft. Back there, a couple of wraps that way, and a couple of wraps this way. Maybe that's all we need. One more. Okay, got it. Tie it off. Come on, baby, tie that baby off. There we go. We're also going to cut this hackle flat on the bottom too and I got it in there nice and tight and I'm going to add just a little more dubbing. Sometimes that dubbing is great stuff because it hides your mistakes. I got a little thread there I don't want showing so I'm just going to cover it up with the dubbing, form my head with it and then we're going to do a whip finish and I told you earlier that I'll show you this whip finish so I'll show you it maybe the last couple flies but I'll show you on this fly. All right that looks pretty good. See how I spread that wing out like that? It's going to float good. Short tail, but bright. Nice looking fly, and the only thing we have to do is cut the bottom. Now to do a, do a whip finish, we're gonna take a bunch of thread, my whole hand, over the top, pull the thread toward me and make a big loop. I'm gonna lay my bobbin up on my screw here to hold it or somewhere to hold it. It can't be loose, gotta hold it. Tuck that underneath, take this thread, my left hand, over once. Now I got it tied. All I do now is just never let go of the thread and go around, but that's a little slow. So I figured out years ago, if I put my finger in the center of this loop and every time tip my finger up, my thumb toward me, and take the top thread, it would be the right thread. And I just slide my red hand down, thumb down. I got a loop. I take the top loop toward me. And just by doing that, I get the right loop. Now, it is possible to get the wrong loop, so you got to be careful. And if I did it right, it'll slide all the way through. Cut the thread off there. Now, one last step on this. We're going to fix the wing so it looks right. Clean that off. And I'm going to cut this hackle right off on the bottom. I don't want any hackle on the bottom. I want this fly to float flat right in the surface film just like that. We'll put it on one of these and take a closer look. It looks pretty good. Maybe a little cement right on the head there. We always got to put a little cement there. Clean out the eye. That's the grandest or the great big, I think it's the... Grandis Dranella, I think, is the newest term they come up on this fly, but it's a big western green drake. And I like to fish this on the Yellowstone River in Yellowstone Park about the first week of August. And those big cutthroats, there's not a lot of fish left there now, but there's some big ones. And those big ones, they get keyed on this great big green drake fly, and they'll be up, they'll be up chasing them. And you can always play and cut some of the hair off that looks just right. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's a pretty good-looking fly from the side view. From the bottom view flat, you can spread the hair out a little bit, elk or deer for the wing, and it lays right in the film and it looks just like that grandest or western green drake.